we've all felt it, inundated with the political prowess or lack thereof of people we've never met, companies with paid faces, and politicians with their trust in me eyes. Whether you agree with the stance and the op-eds thrust into your algorithms or not, whether you're looking for a community ready with facts for bolstering for an already formed opinion, or you're looking to learn something new as you change directions, whether you're wholly invested in politics or you do just enough to stay current, media has got it all, and sometimes that's the problem. There's no shortage of information in this day and age. However, that doesn't mean that all information is good information. So most of us are familiar with sourcing our facts and quotes when using them on the internet. However, not many of us are used to fact-checking our sources or making sure the sources we trust are credited ones before using them to uphold the essays we place onto the political ether. But that's a topic for another day. What we want to talk about today is simply literature's role in politics in general. With the advent of high speed and quantum and 4 going on 5G, literature is at most people's literal fingertips. Hundreds of thousands of sources from around the world can be accessed with a couple taps. What does that mean for literature? Well, for one, it could mean less gatekeeping of information, especially on the world news front. The problem? Well, problems are often in the solution itself meaning literally anyone can make news, and it's increasingly becoming more and more of the public's job to critically think and use cross-referencing to ensure accuracy of the once thought to be an error-free paradigm. The most popular type of literature to critique among citizens of the world? Political pieces. Simply because they are commenting, reporting, and raising questions about things that people have to live with every single day of their lives. People consume political literature because it is relating to their insights, their lifestyles, their wants for society as a whole. Political literature reads as a timed and targeted page turner, something that people have direct hands in changing or sustaining. It's why it always seems to strike a chord or a nerve within us. People's lives are effortlessly intertwined with political pieces. In a world of possibility for us all, our personal visions help lay the groundwork for political action, as once said by author Audre Lorde. The fact that human rights are a political discussion should tell us all we need to know about how personal politics can be, rather how personal politics are. Since the early days of man, when oral literature reigned abound, the ever-roaming griot or bard came through town with news from a different place, with story of culture from miles away, with new laws were passed down to the common folk, and what life was looking like elsewhere. This position was a position appointed to very few, meaning that much of the general public relied on the views of one person, news, stories, and the like, only accessible when the griot returned or chose to share them. The town crier, who in neighborhoods where royal decree was being announced, was responsible for spreading the news far and wide, sometimes actually reading the decrees from official sealed scrolls from the royals and nobles who ruled the land themselves. It was when literature was treated as a privilege for the common masses, only shared in context when it proved to be useful to the literate and the mainly exclusively wealthy. No matter what the outcome of the spread of literature, the common denominator is the political propaganda that helped power it. For example, the essays printed and distributed on the ails and impracticality of slavery, the pamphlets passed about at town meetings about the stances on voting peoples, the newspapers that printed endless runs of exchanges between governments in Europe and the budding government of their American colonies. The article displayed on the front page would ignite a town to riot because it stoked them with words such as freedom and risk. To this day, Common Sense by Thomas Paine is a pamphlet still in circulation and up to 2006 was the all-time best-selling American title. It was printed in 1776. It was a persuasion piece arguing for the independence of the American colonies and the creation of a democratic republic. During its time, it sold half a million copies. Persuasion is the act or fact of coaxing someone or of being coaxed to do or believe something. Basically, persuasion is to bring someone to your side. Now, your side could be anything, and we've all pretty much seen examples of political persuasion media, especially during election periods. 
And a lot has changed since the days of griots, oral literature, and town criers. Most individuals who would fall into the category of the general public have the ability to actively choose what they will engage with in a literary sense. We carefully curate our browsers and homepages to show us exactly what we wish to see. Modern culture persists with the ideals of literacy and individuals' free access to it as a right in this society. However, with the ease of access and the abundance of simultaneous points of view on the same stories, we have lost our appreciation for the vantage point. Somewhere in between not having any say and having the last word with the media we consume, we have lost the ability to keep an open mind. We automatically reject anything we do not want to hear of as false or fake. We fiercely align ourselves with what we have chosen to know, see, and believe or not to believe leaving little room for new literature that does not fit into our digital box. With this general temperament towards literature, is there any room for growth? How can literature break open these barriers between people and open the world to its multiple truths? Is it already doing so? How can literature and politics come together in a way that does not alienate people from its pending messages due to its political stances? Is it possible to have politics without literature? Are politics and literature inextricably intertwined? With the collapse of one leading to the corruption of the other? Or even, could the corruption of either lead to a simultaneous dilapidation of both? Thanks for watching our latest video on what you have known as Dead Eyes Literary Magazine's YouTube channel. We have undergone a big change. We are now an Elia magazine. And you have just watched and listened to our pilot episode exploring the affects and effects of literature on society. Bit by bit, we hope to explore literature around the world in this pending series. So don't forget to subscribe for more content from us, Elia magazine. Bye.